Let everybody know that uh, February is just about gone. March is here. And spring will take a, a hold that uh, winter won't be able to beat back. So we'll be long. We can go out in the yards and pick up limbs and <laughs> open our windows, lay around the house, and do all that good spring stuff. Wanted to briefly speak this morning on a on a movie that I've liked and have watched in the past, and it's called Groundhog Day. The main character is Groundhog Day lives the same day over and over and over until he finally gets it right. Well, part of his routine is he learns the people in the area, in his small town, and he learns their needs and, and what they want. And he, part of his routine is every day he winds up making a circle and he 
helps the same people every day, contacts them, saves a kid from falling out of a tree, changes a tire for some, yeah, <coughs> ladies who are on their way to market, and uh, the people of the town are growing to depend on him. And uh, it kind of led me to the scripture of love thy neighbor. And I wondered back in the day when Jesus had put down his, uh, his children's toys and before he started his great works, I imagine he did the same thing. As he was working with his co-workers, he'd probably ask about their families or he'd go to the market and stop by and, uh, and see individuals who might have a need or he'd come to know and would check on their family and just see how they were doing. And he was already starting his great works. He was filling the need of his community. And I, I think back a little bit to what I can only do in a very small way is I've got a few people that I'll text and a couple people that I'll go stop by and see and I'll check on their families. And if the snow's bad, I'll ask them if they need anything. And it kind of goes back to love thy neighbor. And love thy neighbor and love thy spouse and love the children and love the in-laws and <laughs> love your church family. And uh, that's a good thing because right now I think we could, this part of the world and the entire world could use a little more of love thy neighbor. You would join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thanks for giving us the opportunity to come to your house and worship you. We would ask that you be with those individuals who aren't here with us today and who need your presence in their life. We would ask that you be with us as we start this week and give us the opportunity to have a spirit of heart that will allow us to love thy neighbor. Dear Lord, we love you with all of our heart. Amen. 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 I invite you to stand and stand, uh, stand with me. Yeah, take your hymnal and stand with me. Turn to hymn number 495, Heaven Came Down in Glory to My Soul. <laughs> Oh, 
three, a shelter in the time of storm. Three fifty three. thing or maybe it was sometimes when you're cooped up in the house for a while you just want to get out but I know that uh, roads can still be a little slick in spots 
And uh, so I'm just glad for everyone that was able to get out today and be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we are also thankful for all of you that are joining us by way of Facebook today. Uh, we just uh, are honored that you would spend time in worship with us this morning. Uh, <clears throat> before we uh, take our petitions to prayer, we want to start with praise. Uh, we have been praying for a little baby by the name of Haley for quite uh, a while now. And uh, just to give you a little bit of that child's journey, 249 days in the hospital. Complications from breathing problems. 15 surgeries. 11 failed extubations. Two code blues. Today she is at home. He's got the tiny little babies in his hands. And I am thankful for that today. And we give the Lord praise. We continue to pray that um, she'll get to stay home as many days as she was in the hospital. And then many more without any more complications, without any more problems. And uh, the Lord has brought her uh, this far. We I trust and believe that the Lord will continue uh, to uh, just heal that child and, and give her a long and, and uh, healthy and prosperous life. Um, today, uh, I know that all of our minds are on things that are happening uh, around the world. Uh, our thoughts are certainly with the people of Ukraine this morning. And uh, there's been a lot on Facebook, social media the last few days about pray for Ukraine. And uh, they certainly need our prayers. Uh, as I read those and I began to think about how often it is that we don't think of things until it's in the spotlight. And yet there are many people throughout the world uh, who face the aggression of ideologies that uh, have little to no conscience of the value of human life other than their own. And uh, I don't have time to list them today, but uh, just suffice it to say that there are many, many people that are under... Uh, the thumb of dictators and uh, people that do not have their best interest in mind. And so while we certainly want to pray for Ukraine today, we also want to be mindful of all of those who uh, do not enjoy the liberties that we enjoy, that do not meet freely to worship as we are allowed to do, and that God would be with all of them today. Uh, also, we want to remember Danette. Uh, she is still in the hospital in Springfield, uh, hoping to get her moved to uh, perhaps a rehab. Uh, but she is still in a lot of pain, and uh, there's not much they can do for uh, the injuries that she sustained to her pelvis and uh, tailbone. It's just going to have to take some time. But uh, while the medical field may not be able to do much with that. We know a healer, a physician that can. And so we pray today and ask the Lord to be with Danette. Uh, also, uh, all of the others that are on our prayer list, those that are in uh, the uh, residential care, uh, homebound, we want to remember all of them in our prayers today. Uh, a couple of days ago, my mom uh, started not feeling very well. I put out a request on Facebook for prayer for her. Um, you know, you can say what you want to 
about all of the pros and cons of social media, but I can tell you one of the pros is that you can instantly have a prayer meeting. And uh, I was very uh, appreciative of all of those that responded right away and said that they were praying for her. And uh, so I'm glad that she's uh, able to be in church this morning. Uh, she's still not feeling quite as chipper as she usually is, but uh, she's better than she was. And we're thankful for that. If she gets a little better each day, who knows? In maybe a couple of months, she'll be uh, feeling as good as I do. You never know. But uh, today's her last Sunday with us. Uh, I, I think I think maybe she got sick of me. I'm not sure. But uh, today's her last service with us for a while. Uh, she'll be returning back to Arkansas and on Friday. And uh, she'll be with my sisters down there. I know that they miss her. And uh, so she'll be down there. And uh, they'll get to catch up. And uh, then, who knows, in a few months, we'll have her back up here for a while. And uh, just going to pass her around for a while. But uh, we have certainly enjoyed her being here. If you have a need today, if you would acknowledge it by an uplifted hand, we'll take our cares to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne today with thanksgiving. We thank you for baby Haley and what you have done for her. We pray now, Lord, as she is at home in the care of her parents, that you would give them strength, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them uh, the direction that they need to best take care of her at home. But Lord, we are believing and trusting that she is on her way to full health. And we just ask, God, that you would continue to be in that child's life. Lord, we pray for Danette today, asking, Lord, that you would intervene and relieve her pain, bring healing, Lord, to uh, her pelvic region, and, and Lord, just uh, the bumps and bruises that, that came with her falling. We just pray, God, that you would be with her, that you would minister to her every need. Father, we pray for all of those on our prayer list today, for those that are in residential care, for those that are homebound. Lord, we pray, Lord, today that you would just minister to them as well as all of those needs that were acknowledged by an uplifted hand today. Lord, I pray and ask you to minister to each one according to your will and according to your purpose. I ask, Lord, that you would be with your people today, wherever they may be gathered. Lord, that they would feel your presence. And Lord, especially, we remember those in Ukraine today that are at war. We pray, God, your protection. We pray, Lord, that you would build up a hedge around that country. And Lord, that you would deal with the hearts of world leaders that uh, they would be turned toward you. Lord, we need an intervention of the Holy Spirit today. And we ask, Lord, that not only in Ukraine, but in every region where people are dismissed and marginalized, Lord, I pray for them and ask God that your spirit would be with them and be an encouragement. Father, today we just ask that you would be with us throughout the remainder of the service. Let everything we do glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. We're going to dismiss our kids, the Sunshine Kids, this morning. Miss Kelly will have something uh, special for you back there. And uh, I was telling a few of the guys this morning, they were sort of huddled up over in the corner, and I asked them what they were uh, conniving about, and they said, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> and I said, well, <clears throat> I'm just telling you that uh, today's the last day I have to sing for a while. <laughs> I won't have to sing again until Mom comes back. And uh, so they, they got a little up in the air about that, but they'll, they'll calm down. Um, I, before I sing, I, I do want to say that uh, it has been a delight to have my mom with us uh, the last couple of months. And uh, it's just 
good to be able to spend time with her. And, and I know that we're always uh, sort of picking on each other. We do that with a lot of love. Uh, but I, uh, I have no higher respect for anyone than I do my mom and my dad. Uh, the Bible says to honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the earth. And if that holds true, I'm going to live to be really, really old uh, because I, I have such a deep respect for them. Uh, they're just good people. My dad was uh, a man of, of integrity, um, man whose word was his bond, and uh, my mom has just always been uh, the epitome of a Christian lady, uh, taught us to love God, uh, taught us to respect others, and uh, I just, uh, on this last Sunday that she's here, I, I just wanted to take a moment to honor her and uh, to let her know how much she is loved and how much she is appreciated. And uh, my feelings toward her is what makes me her favorite. <laughs> um, my sisters, you know, not so much. But uh, anyway, I honor her today. And, and uh, I'm in, in her honor, I'm going to sing and uh, a song that I think is timely for our moment. And uh, I hope that it will, I hope that it will bless you. <clears throat>
you have your Bibles today, we're turning to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall, everybody say shall, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want to preach for a few moments this morning on being careful for nothing. Being careful for nothing. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today. Your word is light and life. It's a lamp to our feet, light to our pathway. Lord, I pray today that these two verses of Scripture will minister to us in this moment. I pray, Lord, that you would help me to share those things that you have placed in my heart and mind to share today. Father, I need your help today. I pray, Lord, for your anointing and ask, Lord, that you would just use me as your vessel for the next few moments to encourage this wonderful, wonderful group of people. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The topic of this verse deals with how we handle adversities and fears which all of us will face in life at one time or another. Current events offer us plenty to be concerned about right now. But the amplified version of Philippians 4, 6 states it this way. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. The word anything encompasses everything. And we're not to be anxious and we're not to be worried about anything. Standing against worry and anxiety is one of the subjects of the New Testament. Jesus himself taught that we should Take no anxious thought for tomorrow. We shouldn't worry about what we should eat or drink or about what we would wear. And yet for many today, being calm and not worrying is seemingly something that is impossible. There is this thing to be worried about. That thing to be bothered by some other thing that is threatening to our peace and safety and our comfortable little worlds. And so how do we escape the temptation to threat over those things that are very real in our lives? Well, the answer to that is to do what the Bible tells us to do. And that's where faith kicks in because it takes faith for us to obey the Word of God when everything around us seems to be closing in. And so I want to look at this passage in Philippians and see what the Bible says for us to do concerning worry and anxiety and fear. The Apostle Paul tells us by inspiration of the Holy Spirit to be careful for nothing. Or in other words, do not be worried and fretful about things. And we need to understand today that this is not just merely the suggestion of a man. But the divinely inspired word of God to us today. 
But when we hear that, sometimes our immediate response to the notion that we should just simply stay calm, cool, and collected and not to worry about things is to say, well, it just can't be helped. They will say things like, I, I just can't help but worry. And, and you just don't understand what I'm going through. Worrying is just a part of my nature. I, I'm just a worry wart. I worry about things that other people would not give the time of day to. Doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have to be big things. I, I even worry about little things. It's just impossible for me not to worry. But would the Lord tell us to do something? that we are not capable of doing? Well, the obvious answer to that is no, he wouldn't. There's no way that he would tell us to do something that we could not do. There's no way that he would ask of some, something of us that he would not enable us to do. And so, in light of that, Worrying can indeed be helped. And by faith we can understand and see that God has given us the ability in Christ Jesus to refuse to allow worry to rule over us. It's a radical statement. I understand that, but it must be the truth for Paul and even as well as Jesus to make statements like do not be anxious or do not be worried about anything. Well, if we're not going to be anxious and if we're not going to be worried, then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do or we're going to attempt to do what the Bible tells us to do. The first thing that Paul tells us to do is to take it to the Lord in prayer. Whatever the issue, whatever the problem, whatever the circumstances that is causing you to worry, take that to the Lord in prayer. He says in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. He's talking here about taking our request or our petitions to the Lord in prayer. And notice that he says that we are to pray with thanksgiving or the giving of thanks. Not thanking God for the problem, not thanking God for the issue, but thanking Him in advance for the solution. Because God always has the solution. We may not see it, it may not be happening the way we want it to happen, or as quickly as we think it should happen. But God always has the solution. Even when he doesn't share it with us, it's always there. And did you know that it's nearly impossible to wring your hands over something <clears throat> while giving thanks? You see, worry and Threat stems from fear. And the Lord teaches us that he has not given us a spirit of fear. He does not want us to live in a state of fear. The giving of thanks stems from faith. 
Lord, I don't know how you're going to get me out of this mess, but I'm just thankful that you are. I, I don't know how this is all going to work out, but I'm thankful that you know the plan. I'm struggling right now, but Lord, I know <clears throat> that your word is truth. And I know that you work all things together for good to those that love you. And I'm going to stand on that promise. I'm going to stand on that word. And I'm going to thank you. Not because I'm in the mess that I'm in, but I'm thanking you because I know that you're a great God. And I know that when I come out on the other side, I'm going to be stronger. It's going to help me. It's going to help mold me to be more like you. And so, Lord, I give you thanks. It comes from faith. And so we're taking our request to the Lord and we're trusting Him to work in our behalf. We're trusting Him to help us. And so we're thanking Him that He is with us, that He is faithful to help in our time of trouble. The second thing we have to do after we have prayed, after we have given God thanks, after we have placed that petition in front of Him, we have to let it go. We have to let God have it. What does it mean to let go? It means that when we take a situation to the Lord in prayer, that we leave it there with Him. Because when we continue to worry over it, we keep it in our own control. And we like that. We, we do not fare well when things are out of our control. I, I wouldn't say that I myself am a control freak. <coughs> what are y'all laughing about? I may be a freak, but I'm not, I don't know that I'm a control freak. Somebody tells me I've got OCD. I told him I didn't have OCD. I had CDO. <laughs> All of my alphabets in correct order. <laughs> I, I, I don't really feel like I always have to be in control of things until they're out of control. <laughs> and then I feel like i got to take the wheel because we're not comfortable with things that are not within our control. Even though we're not doing such a good job at it, and even though we don't have the answers, we just have a hard time letting go. Part of that is because whatever the circumstances are, that's our reality. It's where we live. We're confronted with it. And, and so how do I let go of something that's got a hold of me? Well, letting go doesn't mean that the cloud lifts. Letting go doesn't mean that the problem is solved. Letting go doesn't mean that there's still not some miles in that journey that we're going to have to take. Letting go is simply a mindset that says, God, I don't have the answers, but I'm confident that you do. I, I don't know the way forward. But I'm confident that you do. And, and so what I'm going to do is, even though I'm in the circumstances, I, I'm going to do my best to let go of the wheel and let you have it. 
And I need you to guide me and you need to lead me and you need to take me where I need to go and put me where I need to be until this storm passes. Until this time of trouble is behind me. I, I'm going to let it go as much as I can and I'm going to let you deal with the things that I have not got the resources to deal with myself. And that is really what trusting the Lord is all about. It's about taking the load off of us and giving it to the Lord in prayer. So once he has it, once we've prayed about it, once we've given it to him, we need to purpose in our heart that we're not going to become anxious about it anymore. We're going to let it go. Now, is that easy to do? No, it's not. It takes faith to let go of something that's bothering us. It takes faith to lay down something that's causing us to worry but I can promise you today that the result is worth the effort. And, and I might just say before I, I bring this message to a close, I, I might just warn you that even though you have prayed and even though you have thought you let go of it, you're probably going to pick it up again. Like I said, just because you do those things doesn't mean that the problem goes away. And so you may trust God with it for a couple of days, but when it's no better the second day or the third day than it was the day you prayed about it, I can almost guarantee you you're going to pick it back up. You know why? Because I do the same thing. That's in our human nature to do. Well, God, you're, you're not taking care of this fast enough, so I, maybe you mean for me to do this. Maybe there's just something I'm missing here. I, I look and I, I, I do inventory and I realize I don't have the tools and the resources to take care of it, but maybe that's coming and you're just going to give me that. And so we, we pick it back. God doesn't get angry with us when we do that. It just means that we may have to go back to our prayer room and we may have to pray about it again and we may have to let go of it again and it may be a process that we continue to do until God finally lifts that cloud, that burden, and you realize that you're okay and that God has you in the palm of his hand. The encouraging thing is that once we do those two things, once we pray about it, give God thanks and turn it over to him, we are given a promise. And the promise is that the peace of God will replace the worry. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall. Let's say it again. Shall. Yeah. Not maybe. Not hopefully. But the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There is a peace that defies human understanding. And that peace comes to us by making our requests known to God in prayer, leaving our burdens and concerns with Him, casting all of our cares upon Him because we understand that He cares for us. And once we do that, the peace of God begins to settle <coughs> into our spirits and it abides with us.
keeping us and guarding our hearts and mind from further anxiety and worry. It, it, it's that season when we are simply trusting in the Lord. The psalmist makes mention of trusting the Lord in the second verse of Psalm 91. He says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. The word that is translated trust here is a Hebrew word that means to have confidence and to be secure. It means to be safe and carefree. That means that even though our life may be turned upside down at the moment, or the world is in chaos as it is right now, that the Holy Spirit within us causes an inner feeling of safety and calm. That is the peace of God that passes all understanding and it belongs to the child of God. I like that the inspiration of the Holy Spirit prompted Paul to add those words, passes all understanding. Because it really does defy logic. It escapes careful reasoning and it surpasses human wisdom. I can't explain it. I can only tell you that according to God's word, it's available. It hasn't been very long ago that an incident happened that caused me a lot of consternation. I couldn't sleep. My mind would not turn off. I'd come to the office trying to work on a message, but my spirit was just unsettled. I even had to spend some time in repentance because I was having thoughts that were a little less than uh, what Jesus would have thought. I was upset. I wanted to I wanted to deal with it. And yet I knew that I shouldn't deal with it. And so after a couple of sleepless nights, after a couple of days of wrestling with it, came to the office and during my prayer time first of all I repented asked God to forgive me of the thoughts that I had had concerning another individual and I said God I, I, I can't deal with this. I, I don't have the wisdom to. And if I try, I'm going to create more problems. And so I'm just going to give it to you. And I promise you that immediately, it, it didn't take all day, it didn't take a week, immediately there was a peace that came into my spirit. And I just left it there. I went home that night, slept well, didn't wake up thinking about it. Got up the next morning, came to the church, got to the office, 
opened up my Bible, opened up and uh, began to uh, try to put together uh, the message for this week. God was with me. Has the situation been resolved? No. Will it ever be resolved? I don't know. But it's in the hands of God and I'm at peace with that. The Lord will take care of it in His time and in His way and all will be well. And so I encourage all of us today to enjoy that kind of peace in our lives. Let's take our request to the Lord in prayer. Give Him thanks for His faithfulness to help us in our time of need. And then let it go and relax in His perfect peace, knowing that He is in control. He is in control. Everything that's happening in your life, everything that is happening around the world, has not gotten God in a quandary. He, he's not scurrying around trying to figure out what to do. He's in control. And he made sure a long time ago on a place called Calvary, a hill called Golgotha, to make sure that every man, woman, boy, and girl had an opportunity at hope. Hope that transcends anything that this world would ever have to offer. And today, we have that hope within us. The Holy Spirit that helps us and guides us and keeps us until that day when Jesus comes for us and we will rest in his eternal peace in that place that he has gone to prepare. Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace those who mind the state on you because they trust in you. That is the promise of God. To keep in perfect peace those whose mind is stayed upon him. Let's choose his way today. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the encouragement we find in it. Lord, while the world is at war while conflict of all kinds are about. While individually we face such difficult circumstances, I thank you today for your Holy Spirit. I'm thankful, Lord, that in your wisdom that it was not enough that you just wrapped yourself in flesh and came and dwelt among people and taught us all of these wonderful and beautiful truths. But Lord, that you looked even further and saw the need to be in us. And today you are in us by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we are thankful for that. And Lord, while we will face things and go through things that we don't understand and are difficult to deal with, Lord, I know that you are with us, that you are keeping us. And Lord, even though we take one foot forward and two steps back, Lord, I know that you're there. You're, with, you're, you're, you're holding us. You're keeping us. And Lord, I pray today for your peace to be in our hearts and minds through Christ. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. As we come to the table of the Lord in communion today,
I just want to reiterate that these emblems that we are about to partake of remind us that the Lord is still in control. I'm amazed at the love and grace and wisdom of God. That we can take the element of a piece of bread and a little cup of juice and have the powerful reminders that we have that God is with us. And he is here today. And I believe that in this time of communion, this time that we spend alone with God, even though collectively as the body of Christ, we receive communion together. We all come to the table of the Lord. But in this moment of being alone, I ask you to take this moment and give to God whatever needs to be given to Him. And let the peace of God still your heart and calm your fears. On the night that He was betrayed, Jesus took the bread blessed it, broke it and gave to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And likewise, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink all of it. This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Gracious Father, I'm thankful that you are our God. We have not put our hopes into something that is hopeless. For our hope is in you. Our hope is in your word. Lord, our hope is in your promise. Father, today in this congregation, we have beautiful and wonderful people. And Lord, all of us are either in a season of good or a season of difficult. But you're in both. And so Lord, I pray today. I pray for those who are struggling. They're, they're doing their best. But they struggle. Lord, I pray for your peace today, your comfort, your strength. Lord, as our hearts are bowed before your throne, help us to realize how privileged we are to have an audience with you today. Lord, reassure us of your love. Reassure us today of your care. And help us, Lord. Help us to put our trust in you, knowing that 
There is a better day. There's a brighter sunshine. There is a season ahead of rejoicing. Father, today we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Larry's going to come and lead us in our closing hymn today, a wonderful old hymn. I didn't ask him to sing this, didn't know he was singing it when I put together the message for today. But it's a great song that sort of puts an exclamation point on the sermon today. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Let's join our voices together in song today. Stand together. Turn to him number 353. I'm sorry, 354. 354. <laughs> today. What uh, a wonderful uh, looking group of people. And I pray that all of you have a week that is immensely blessed of the Lord. Let's make this a, a great week. It's going to be, uh, the weather's going to be good, at least for this week. Uh, it's the Ozark, so I can't promise what uh, a few days will bring, but the the forecasters are saying back up in the 60s for uh, temps and plenty of sunshine. So let's let that sunshine just permeate our spirits and, uh, and just have a good God week. All right? Amen. Amen. God bless you. As we're dismissed today, let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Uh, our Father, Father our heaven, Lord, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom Lord, come, Lord, thy will be done. Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.